Don't, don't be looking for me to give you anything, Barry. <laughs> he never talks that, that good about me. I don't understand what's going on, Mike. You must be sick. Oh, did you? Okay. Okay, you give it back when we're finished tonight. Amen. It's good to be here this evening. And uh, Brother Lawson asked me Wednesday night if I'd fill in, and uh, I thought, you know, that's, that's good. Uh, tonight's a special night for me. Uh, here in just a few hours, I got saved at a New Year's Night Watch service. And uh, about 12.25 tonight, while you're either up or sleeping, I'm going to turn 47 year old in Jesus Christ. I got saved 47 years ago. And uh, I'm so thankful. I'm telling you, God turned me around totally, completely. I wasn't looking for that when I went to church that night. Certainly not. But I'm so thankful for the convicting power of the Spirit of God that drew me that night. Amen. All right, open your Bibles tonight to the book of Second Chronicles chapter 26. And uh, Brother Barry has already mentioned, but I uh, appreciate the visitors being here tonight and uh, participating in the service this evening. And we trust and pray that you get something tonight out of God's precious Word. I've prayed, I've studied, I've sought the face of God, and all I know to do is to bring what God's put on my heart. And uh, that's all He expects out of me. If anything's done, then God's going to have to do it. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse number 1. Uh, let's start reading there. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. Let's bow our heads tonight in a word of prayer and ask God tonight to give us some direction in what he wants us to do tonight. Our Father, we're so thankful for the precious, infallible Word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Lord, may we glean something tonight from your precious Word that will feed our soul, that will keep us in the way, the right way. Bless your people tonight, Lord. I pray, Father, that you'll bless our pastor. Touch him tonight, Lord, and heal him. Move upon him in a special way. I pray, Heavenly Father, that while he's at home, whether lying down, whatever, I pray that the Spirit of God will visit him in a special way. And Lord, that he'll sense your presence so real. Lord, we'll thank you and we'll bless you. We'll praise you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated tonight. The Bible tells us that Uzziah began to reign after his father's death being only 16 year old. Can you imagine that? 16 years old and becomes the king of Judah. The... Uh, Nations had been split at that time, ten northern, two southern. And here Uzziah becomes king over Judah at 16 year old. Now there's some things tonight that I want to look at in the scripture. He filled in, the, the, the Bible said here in uh, verse number four, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah did. Now I want to follow some things tonight and you bear with me until we get to the meat that God has laid upon my heart in the scripture. I enjoy studying the, the, the Kings, 1st, 2nd Kings, 2nd Chronicles. It tells us a lot of things about the history of the nation of Israel. 
they would rise up a king and he would live and die and he either done that which was right in the sight of God or the Bible said he done that which was evil in the sight of God. And, and uh, here we find tonight that Uzziah steps into his father's place and takes reign where his father stood. Now his father had gone off to battle and he brought back the gods of the people that they were fighting against. And he set up high places and the Israelites began to worship there. And the scripture tells us this in the book of 2 Kings chapter 15 that Uzziah done everything that his father did and the only thing he left in place was what his father had done. The Israelites still had a place that they offered and sacrifices unto other gods when Uzziah, but yet the Bible said this, that Uzziah done that which was right in the eyes of God. Now I'm going to lay a foundation for something tonight. The scripture said that he reigned 52 years over the house of Judah. That's a long time. That's a long time for him to reign in Judah. Now let's look at the Bible. I've looked at there's several things here tonight that I've kind of got a little note beside that I want to call out. Uh, tonight that Uzziah done. It said in verse number 5 that he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding the visions of God and as long as he sought the Lord God made him prosper. So that was a good thing. He sought the face of God. He sought after God. And then it said this right here, that also in verse number six, that he went and warred against the Philistines. The Philistines were always the enemy of the nation of Israel. And so Uzziah put in place, and he was a man of war. He fought against the enemies of Judah. And it said that he fought the Philistines, and he broke down the wall of Gath, and then in verse number seven, it said God helped him against the Philistines and the Arabians. And then down in verse number four, it said, moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem, the corner gate, the valley wall or valley gate and the turning of the wall and fortified them. Now bear with me tonight while I lay something here. In verse number six, it said, Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men. And it says on down that these were mighty men of valor, 2,600 men that were ready to fight in just a moment and go out against the enemy. And then in verse number six, it said that Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and, and spears and helmets and, and all kinds of body armor. And even down in verse number 15, it said that there were men in Jerusalem that were cunning men that built engine and he placed them upon the walls and the corners that were able to sling rocks and arrows against the enemy. Everything that Uzziah had done, he put in place to protect the, the town of Judah to protect Jerusalem, the place that God had put his name. And he got everything in place and everything in order. Uh, my dear friend tonight, and listen, he, he got all of the mechanics done. I want us to see it. He got it all in place and got all the mechanics. And may I say tonight that we can get everything in order tonight and everything in place and do everything right. I've, I've preached in churches all throughout this place and, and some of them just sit down and they follow a menu. I mean, they follow it to the T. I, I remember years ago preaching at a church and, and uh, had ran into the pastor and said, I'd like for you to come down and, and uh, say a little word to the church. And he flopped out a bulletin in front of me and said, now here, they're going to sing a little something here and there they're going to do a little something. And right here, I'm going to fit you right in between. And you got about 10 minutes to say something. Listen, my friend, the house of God is not like that. 
we ought not go by a menu, but we ought to go by what the Spirit of the living God leads us to do. I want to say something tonight. There would have been nothing any greater to my heart. I, I enjoyed all the singing, the special singing tonight. But that young little girl tonight blessed my heart. I'm telling you, that's the uprising of the church of the living God. And I'm so afraid today that many of our young people are not going to get to hear any old-fashioned preaching of God's infallible Word. I'm talking about just rear back and shuck the corn. Preach the Bible just as it is to people as we are. I'm going to say a study in the Kings and the Bible. You can go all the way back and study all of them. Every single one of them were just like us. They all had the their fallacies. They all fell short of the glory of God, but God always blessed them when they sought God's face, when they put their heart and their soul to the plow and meant business, God blessed them. Our churches today need to see some old-fashioned worship. I mean, I remember as a boy, Brother Barry, just a little young fella. Uh, you know how children are. And I, I ran into Brother John Hayworth a little while ago. And uh, back there in the back. And I just brought back memories. I used to teach a Sunday school class. I mean years ago. That's a long time ago. Intermediate boys. Uh, I'd go in that class and John would have one of them by the neck, uh, by the neck in a headlock. I'm telling you, just had to stay on them all the time. And now, now look, he's working in the church of God. You just never know what they're listening to. But I remember as a boy that the preachers of the living God would stand up, the man of God would preach the Bible without fear and favor of losing a job or losing a friend, but they'd preach the word of God just like it is without trimming any corners at all. If it said it, that's what they stood on. If it said it, that's what they believed. And our young people of this generation are being stuck a little sugar tit and they're being fed something that's not the pure Bible. I got into a conversation this past week with somebody. And they said, well, why don't you just pray to God instead of talking about Jesus Christ? And I turned around and I said, well, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And they turned around and said, now that's a lie. Now normally, that would get under my collar. Normally, I'd get upset and want to start to argue. But the Holy Spirit said, just back off. Don't cast your pearls before the swine because they're not going to believe anything you say anyway. This young generation has somebody that's sitting up on a stool that's no more a preacher of the Bible than anybody else in the world. God didn't call speak of, He wants preach of. Somebody that will preach the Bible. That will stand up and call it sin just the way it is. Amen. Preacher, you ever fail and fall on your face? Many a time. Brother Barry said it a while ago. These times, I'm telling you, and I've pastored some of these churches down through the years, and I've got nearly 30 years of pastoring. I know exactly what people think. I know exactly how. I'm t I know how they can put on their religious tie and speak their religion and talk about how much they love the Bible, how much they stand behind the way you preach and love the way you preach, and the next time they get a knife in your back. <laughs> Said, well, preach, I just don't like that. Then just step in line. You're not the only one. I had a lot of people down through the years. Listen, people get mad at you because you preach the Bible. 
Somebody said to me one time, said, Preacher, have you been watching me all week? I said, well, why? Said, everything you preached about today was on me. I said, I ain't looked at nothing. I said, you just need to ask God about that. We can get all the mechanics and stuff in place just like Uzziah did. But I'm going to tell you, what we need is a spirit of a living God in this place. I don't mean a jack in the box. I don't mean a setting down and a playing it up and strumming it up. Listen, God ain't no jack in the box. But I'm telling you, when the Spirit of God is ready to move in reality, when He moves into this place, you'll know it. I'll never forget the night I got saved. I can, I tell you, I don't care if I have to tell my testimony a 50 million times. I'm going to do it. I want to know. I want everybody to know that I got saved by the grace of Almighty God, that God took a drunkard and a dopehead and made a new creature out of him. I ran down to that altar, boy, just as empty as I could be. I got down on my face and began to pray. I don't remember what I said, but I do know this, that when I stood up and walked out of that church that night, that I was something totally different than I was when I went in. And I've never been the same since that night. Well, I've sinned a lot. I fell on my face a lot. I've come short a whole lot. I've done a lot of things I shouldn't have done. I've said a lot of things I shouldn't have said. But there's one thing, he moved inside of me, dear friend, and I've never been the same since. Glory to God, there's a river that flows. Every once in a while, I might be driving down the road. I might be listening to a gospel song. Or I might have the radio off and just talking to the Lord. And all of a sudden, there's a fountain that begins to bubble up inside of me that I can't control. And it begins to spill out of my eyes. I begin to weep and cry before God. And them good, warm, hot tears begin to roll down my face. It wasn't because I watched some kind of sad movie or nothing. I'm telling you, there's somebody alive that moved inside of me, uh, that charges me uh, like charging a battery, dear friend. It energizes me. The sister was singing a few minutes ago. The doctor, I'm going to... Say it just like our brother said it the other night when he was preaching. What a mess this world's in. It's a mess, I'm telling you what. It's a mess. Everywhere we look, it's a mess. It, it's a mess, I'm telling you. It, it's awful. I remember just as a young, young boy, my grandmother and and some of you ladies may know what I'm talking about. She used to do a lot of barrel stitching. And she sat for hours, sitting in a rocking chair, you know, for hours, just sitting there stitching, stitching, stitching. My grandfather would sit there with a little old piece of cedar and he'd whittle until there was a pile of, of, of whittlings there laying on the floor. Now, my goodness, we're so wired up today, we can't sit long enough to even settle down and do anything like that. We're wired in high gear. My grandmother sat there and stitch and stitch and stitch and stitch, and I think, my goodness, what in the world? And one day I laid down on the floor underneath that. And I looked up at the bottom of that, and I said, my goodness, I called Mama Collins, that was her name. She's in heaven shouting tonight. I said, Mama Collins, what in the world are you doing? What in the world are you stitching? That's just awful. All kinds of different colored, ugly threads hanging down off the bottom. I said, why, well, that's a mess. And she said, well, stand up a minute. 
and come over here and looked at it. And I walked over there and looked at it. And my goodness, on the top of that thing, it was just the prettiest little old picture she was stitching inside the, on a piece of cloth. And you see, we're down here looking up at the bottom. And it's a mess. But Almighty God is standing above in His divine plan, His divine will, and there's not a stitch out of place. He's drawn a picture. As a matter of fact, He said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you something tonight, friend. There's happiness in heaven. There's shouting in heaven. It's a glorious place tonight. I have not seen nor hear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. <laughs> oh, heaven's a wonderful place. And I want to say tonight that if Jesus Christ came back at midnight and you're not saved, you're going to miss out on it. I said, well, preacher, I'll just wait and I'll just get saved after he comes. I'm sorry, you won't either. I said, well, explain that to me, preacher. Okay, it's like this Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. I just gave you the Gospel. You have to make a decision tonight. And I can't make it for you. You can either accept what Christ done for us or reject it and you reject what he done. There is no second chances. God said he'd send strong delusion. They'll all believe a lie. And he said they'll ever one be damned. And you can cry and beg and scream all you want, dear friend, but listen, you die without Jesus Christ, you'll burn in hell for eternity. No second chances. There is no purgatory. There is no set in the waiting room somewhere. Listen, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you'll never get in that place. All the mechanics is set in place. Now I'm fixing to step into something here. Hezekiah messed up bad. I don't mean just a little bitty thing. You know, we, we come to the place anymore that we categorize sin and say, well, that's just a little bitty sin. That's just a little bitty tiny sin. And there are some great sins like the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because it can't be forgiven in this world neither the one to come. Do you know something tonight? The same blood that Jesus shed on the cross tonight that he shed, listen, he shed it for the harlot. He shed it for the murderer. He shed it for the religious. He shed it for the drug. He shed his blood for all sinners. And he said this right here. For whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Yeah. Salvation's the gift of God. You can't buy it. You can't work for it. There's not a thing you can do for it but receive it. And it's absolutely free. Free. I didn't do a thing for it, Barry. Ronnie, I didn't do nothing for it. Andy, I didn't do one thing. Just the night that he called my name in that church and said it's time right now to come down here. If you don't get right tonight, you're going to burn in hell. And I ran down there that night and called on his name. And it didn't cost me nothing. I've been enjoying it ever since. In a few hours, it'll be 47 years now. Did you hear me? I know I'm 68 tonight, but in Jesus Christ, I'm 47. Yeah. 
Uzziah done something real bad. I mean, all these things he done and said all the mechanical things, he got himself all puffed up, you know, like some big old pompous Baptist preacher. I'm telling the truth right here. I remember God was dealing with my heart about preaching His Word. We went to Sand Mountain Bible Camp one night. In Sand Mountain, Georgia. Here's some good preaching. First time I got to meet Brother Lester Roloff. And the preacher that night got up and he called some fella to come down to preach that night and he walked down that aisle, you know, all pompous and listen, all pompous and he got up and started preaching and, and said this right here, that John the Baptist was the first Baptist. <laughs> you talking about the Spirit of God dying in that place. I don't mean that God's Spirit died. I'm talking about the atmosphere died. And I was there seeking God's face. I was fasting and praying, trying to figure out, God, are you really trying to call me to preach? And I'd set my heart been fasting for two or three days. And, and when he done that and it all, listen, the singing was good. I thought, man, how am I going to stand a few days of this? I got so filled up with the Spirit of God, I couldn't hardly stand it until that fellow stood up there and said, John the Baptist was the first Baptist preacher. And I just died all of a sudden in there, all around me. I mean, there could have been a funeral held in there. And I looked at Shelly and I said, sweetie, let's, let's get out of this place for a little while. Let's go down to our tent and let's pray. We got down inside that tent and we got to, got to praying and seeking the face of God. And I don't know how much time went by, but I'm telling you, we was praying and earnestly seeking God. And all of a sudden, it's just like Solomon's temple, a cloud filled that place. I can't explain it. It's better felt than told. And the, listen, my wife's witness tonight that the power of a living God come right down inside the little four walls of that little old bitty tent that we was about to sleep on the ground in. I'm going to tell you something. The Spirit of God's real. He is a person. Not just an it. You can grieve Him. You can hurt him. Sometimes we do it with our actions. Sometimes we do it with our thoughts or the things we say. We can grieve the Spirit of God. That night the power of God come down inside that place. Oh, it was so real. Me and my wife was a weeping and a praising God, just shouting inside that little tin. And time had went by. I said, well, sweetie, we ought to go on back up to the building. And as we were walking back up to that building, I looked at her and said, baby doll, I think I'm going to have to preach. You remember that, sweetheart? When I said that, Heaven opened up again right there in that field and began to rain down on my soul. I finally got back here and you've heard the story so many times and September 21st, 1981, preacher Lawson is preaching on Jonah. You're gonna run here, run there, run over here, run there, run here, run there. And everywhere you run, God's gonna be there. You can't get away from it. Right over here, Brother Barry. You remember that, don't you? I'll never forget it, just like, I'm telling you, just like the night I got saved. I won't forget that as long as I can keep my sanity. And I finally surrendered. I want to say something that I, that, the, that, that preaching is not a vocation. Preaching the Word of God is a calling from Almighty God. And if you're not called of God, quit. 
Step out of the pulpit. Resign. If God didn't call you, I've heard some of them say, well, I went off to Bible college, got myself an education. I got all educated now. I'm a preacher. God didn't call you. You're not a preacher. God calls men to preach His Word. You study the Kings and you study the, the Chronicles and, and you'll find Elijah. He's called the man of God. And then you find Elisha, and they're called the men of God. And when the men of God came around and they saw them coming, they feared because they knew that they would hear the truth. A man of God will tell you the truth. I remember teaching that boy in Sunday school class many, many, many years ago. I said, Boys, I'd rather tell you the truth and you get mad at me. You can be mad at me from now on than for me to feed you a lie and it destroy you somewhere in your life. I'm going to tell you something. You can't go wrong preaching that book right there. And I'm talking about the King James Bible. I believe with all of my heart and all of my soul that every single jot and tittle of this book is inspired of God. It's truth cover to cover. So let me get to Uzziah. Uzziah got himself all built up. And I'm telling you, the fame of him went out all across. Everybody heard how great Uzziah was. You know how great I think I am? If you could measure between my fingers right there. I'm nothing, Brother Barry. I ain't nothing. Can I be honest with you tonight? You ain't nothing either. I am what I am by the grace of God, and that's it. And no more. I deserve hell. I should have, I should have split hell wide open were it not for the grace of Almighty God. Uzziah overstepped his bounds. He walked right into the temple, picked up a censer, and went down to offer incense unto God. The king of Judah. I'm telling you, he was out of bounds. God Almighty laid down in his word that that was the job of the Levitical priesthood and the priesthood only. That was their job and no one else's outside the Levites could ever present anything like that before God. And Azariah the priest, and by the way, Azariah the priest that ran in there as fast as he could when he seen the, the king go out of bounds, he was the one that served in Solomon's temple. He was a Levite. And rightly so, he run in there. He took the other with him. And he told him, this is not your job. This is not your place. You don't belong here. You're not to serve these tables. You're just a king and not a priest. I'm going to tell you something. A priest is much higher than a king. Let me say this tonight, that a king can be replaced, but a priest cannot be. He's a priest of the living God. He got mad at him. He got mad at Azariah and the 80 that were all gathered around him. He just got angry and started slinging that censer all around. Can you see him? He said, now preacher, I'd never get mad. I'd never get mad like that, all right? Let's just pull out of the parking lot and drive down the Broadway and let's put our signal on to turn right and let somebody pull right out in front of you and nearly run over you. You'll do what Brother Ed Blue used to call it, horn cursing. 
whack, 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 and you're just cursing him with that horn. We all get angry. We all get upset. But listen, Uzziah got angry. He got mad. I've built all of this. I've supplied all. I've got all the mechanics. The problem is he didn't see the spiritual aspect to it. I'm afraid there's a lot of people like that in our churches today. I know, Brother Barry, you've pastored them too, but you've got to take a little old baby, little old tiny baby spoon that's got plastic on it can speed. You've got to just spoon feed them. Brother Ronnie, you know this tonight. You can say something preaching the Word of God and somebody will take it wrong. They'll take you wrong and say, well, preacher, you just preach like you're mad and angry at all. Listen, I love you tonight with all my heart. I know it may not seem like it, but I do. I love you tonight, and I want the best for you. I want the best for all of us. Wouldn't it be something tonight if this is our final service and God's judging our heart tonight, and all of a sudden we hear the shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and we close our eyes here and open them there. Maybe this old 68-year-old will have a little easier time getting up off my knees praying and getting that glorified body. Of course, it would be like that song we sang this morning. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. I'm afraid, Brother Barry, tonight that there's a lot of people that's standing in the pulpits across America that are not preachers of the Word of God that's called of God. I heard a fellow say one time that my grandmommy told me all my life I was going to grow up and be a preacher. So that's exactly what I did. How did your grandmommy know? It's a calling. It's a calling. It's a spiritual calling. I'm going to tell you something, I wouldn't trade it. The only time I'd even think about trading it is when God's just let me flat, fall flat on my face. I would to God sometime that there's a trap door right here that I could just drop out and slide out of here and hide. Because I tried to do it on my own. And I can't do it on my own. I can't do it. I can't do it. The very same year that Uzziah died, and I'm coming to a close quick, is the same year that Isaiah said in chapter number six that he saw the Lord high and lifted up. He saw them seraphim. He said, I saw the Lord also sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and his train. Brother Barry preached about that this morning, about the hem of the garment, that garment that went all the way down to the floor. We see many of the women that get married, the train that follows behind them as they walk down the aisle, that's just simply an extension of the glory. Isaiah saw the Lord, and I'm going to tell you, we need to see, not physically tonight, we're not going to see him physically with our eyeballs, but listen, we need to get a hold of God today. We need to experience some old fashioned. Old fashioned. You're looking at a preacher tonight that shouting don't scare me one bit. I'm telling you, not marry a bit. I grew, I grew up on that. Them preachers preaching the Word of God when I was a kid, why the people would be shouting, running the benches all over. And listen, that was a Baptist church. Now we do good to get a spark. 
of any life in this place tonight. We need some life in here. And if we get the Spirit of God in here, there'll be life. I'm thankful for the two souls that's been saved. I really am. Listen, God, God calls preachers. And He does it for a reason. I'm going to read something out of the book of Ephesians and I'm going to come to, come to a close. Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. He said, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, speaking of Christ, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it that, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And look at this. He gave some apostles he gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists. He gave some pastors. And he gave some teachers. God did. God did. God does the calling. You don't choose your own vocation. Every one of us tonight, listen. Me and... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hound on him since he, ain't here, since he ain't here tonight. And then he, he's, he's somewhere else. But brother-in-law, Robbie Cox, we call him Hoghead. And there's a reason behind that. Me and Robbie, one Sunday, we decided, I believe we'll just try to sing in the choir. We come up here, big old choir, you know, a lot of people there. We're standing in the back of the choir, and we're standing back there just opening up our voice, and, and, and there's a lady in front of us done this. <laughs> I, I promise you, uh, you know good and well that she wanted me and Robbie to see her do that. <laughs> we both looked at each other and said, well, that's not our calling. I can't say. And I love, listen, I love good, heartfelt, spirit-filled singing. Now, nothing can replace it. I'm going to tell you something. It'll help preaching to hear good old-fashioned singing. I don't like to hear a dead choir. I, hear, I love to hear a choir that's alive. I'm telling you what that'll set a preacher on fire. <laughs> but I learned that day that that was not my gift. <laughs> and that my big mouth was for standing up here yelling and screaming. Oh, listen, you better get saved before it's too late. I'm trying to stand up here as a preacher of God tonight. Let's give you the gospel of the grace of God and tell you that Jesus saves, Jesus loves you, Jesus died for you, and Jesus will save you. He'll save you tonight. I'm telling you, right now, today's the day of salvation. I know right now the devil's trying to tell you right now, just, you've got plenty of time ahead. Just wait, there's another day, there's another time. They, may, they might not be. Jesus comes tonight, you're going to be left behind. And oh, listen, you're going to suffer the great tribulation. Oh, listen, it's going to be awful. It's going to be a time like this earth never seen before. Great tribulation. Jesus will save you tonight. Let's do, let's, listen, let's just... Don't follow a menu. We need to be decent in order and stuff like that, but let's don't be statutes and just follow just a dead bunch of 
Garbage is what I call it. Religious stuff. If I'm preaching, Brother Barry's preaching, Preacher Lawson's preaching, and the Holy Ghost wants you to shout, and it's real, and you, you want to shout, and you know it's real, then you shout. If you're singing a song and God gets on you, you, you can shout if God gets on you. If He ain't on you, just be quiet and sing your song and get down. <laughs> That's about as plain as I can get. i got to say this and then I'll close. I've shut my Bible. Brother Barry, you done said that Michael said that when you preacher shuts his Bible, don't mean nothing. I remember a little old church my father-in-law went to years ago and he invited us up to a singing. Group got up there to sing, you know, and I mean, the church is twice dead and plucked up by the roots. I mean, there's just no life in it at all. Singing was horrible. I, I mean, it couldn't get no worse. An old tenor singer got all wound up and wild and thought he'd just work it up and started leaping and jumping up and down and running all over the place and singing and trying to testify. He even fell over on Brother John, my father-in-law. The father-in-law said, son, just go ahead and get up. I mean, it was dead. You can't make God come into a place. He's going to step in when he wants to. Who knows how many devils lived in, the, in that church at night. <laughs> I, I've pastored some churches that had devils in it. I've walked right up to them face to face. Had my shelly. And I know they was a devil. And I looked at him eyeball to eyeball. And I looked at that devil and I said, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over you right now in the name of Jesus. Just a pure devil. Done nothing but made havoc of that entire service and slammed the door when they went out. When they went out, I said, Hallelujah, the devil's gone. You can get saved tonight. Come on to the instrument. I'm going to shut up. Mama, about 30, 35 minutes, you're supposed to do this. I didn't see you do it tonight. What you got, Brother Barry? Page number 177, are you washed in the blood? Have a one stand tonight. Would you do it? Have a one stand. Are you saved and do you know you're saved? You just playing the game tonight? You just playing the religious hypocrisy? I want us to sing this tonight. You can get right with God tonight. Start the new year off right. While we sing.